Welcome to Science Telly, where we uncover the incredible, bizarre, and often untold stories from the past. Today, we are diving into 100 mind-blowing facts that they did not teach you in school. From ancient mysteries to strange inventions, these facts will change how you see history forever. Buckle up for a journey through time, packed with surprises at every turn. Let us get started. Augustus Caesar, the nephew of Julius Caesar, was the wealthiest man in history. Adjusted for inflation, his net worth would be a staggering $4.6 trillion. To put that in perspective, Augustus could buy everything on Earth today and still have money left over. While some claim that Mansa Musa, the king of Timbuktu, was wealthier, Augustus's fortune is measurable, securing his spot at the top. Alexander the Great, who ruled one of the largest empires in history, may have been buried alive by accident. Modern scientists suspect he suffered from Guillain-Barre syndrome, which causes paralysis while leaving the mind fully conscious. After enduring 12 days of agonizing pain, his body showed no signs of decay for six days, sparking speculation that he was still alive when he was entombed. Terrifying, isn't it? Here's a lesser known fact. The world's most successful pirate wasn't Blackbeard or Captain Kidd, but a woman named Ching Shi. Born in China, she rose from being a prostitute to commanding the powerful Red Flag Fleet, which boasted over 300 warships and up to 80,000 people. Her influence was so great that the Chinese government eventually offered her and her crew amnesty just to end her reign over the seas. In the ancient Olympics, athletes competed completely naked. This wasn't just to honor the gods, but also because they believed it helped the body sweat freely and detoxify. Interesting trivia, the word gymnastics comes from the Greek word gumnasia, meaning athletic training, and gumnos, meaning naked. Next time you go to the gym, remember you're following in some ancient traditions, although thankfully, the dress code has evolved. Cleopatra, Egypt's legendary queen, wasn't actually Egyptian. She was Greek, a descendant of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was established by one of Alexander the Great's generals. Cleopatra was the first in her family to learn the Egyptian language, bridging the Greek and Egyptian cultures. Fluent in nine languages, she was as intellectually sharp as she was politically astute. Did you know the shortest war in history lasted only 38 minutes? This occurred in 1896 between the British Empire and the Sultanate of Zanzibar. When the Sultan refused to step down, the British launched an overwhelming attack, quickly ending the conflict. That's shorter than most TV shows. Contrary to popular belief, Vikings didn't wear horned helmets. The iconic image of Vikings with horns on their helmets comes from 19th century opera costumes, not historical evidence. Actual Viking helmets were practical and built for combat, not for show. So the next time you see a Viking costume with horns, you'll know it's more fantasy than fact. Here's a myth buster. George Washington, America's first president, never had wooden teeth. His dentures were made from a mix of ivory, human teeth, and metal, a combination far from the wooden teeth myth that has persisted over time. Speaking of myths, Napoleon Bonaparte wasn't as short as you've been told. At around 5'6", he was of average height for his era. The misconception about his height came from a confusion between French and British measurement units. While his height may have been average, his ambitions were anything but. Medieval Europe had its own unique blend of faith and warfare with the Knights Templar. These warrior monks protected pilgrims traveling to Jerusalem and amassed vast wealth, playing a crucial role in medieval banking. Their downfall has led to centuries of conspiracy theories, leaving their true legacy cloaked in mystery. One of the most famous betrayals in history is Julius Caesar's assassination. On March 15, 44 BC, he was stabbed 23 times by Roman senators including his close friend Brutus. Although the phrase et tu brut is famously attributed to Caesar, scholars still debate whether he actually said it. His assassination marked the end of the Roman Republic and the dawn of the Roman Empire. If you've ever visited the Colosseum in Rome, you may have noticed its rough pockmarked stone. But did you know it was once covered in gleaming marble? After the fall of Rome, the Goths looted the Colosseum, stripping it of its marble and iron. What remains today is only a shadow of its former glory. Grigory Rasputin, a Russian mystic, met one of history's most bizarre ends. 
famous for his influence over the Russian royal family, especially Tsarina Alexandra, Rasputin became the target of nobles who wanted him gone. They poisoned him with cyanide-laced cakes and wine, but the poison had no effect. After being shot multiple times and thrown into a frozen river, Rasputin finally succumbed. Even in death, his enigmatic legacy continued to puzzle the world. Did you know ancient Rome had female gladiators too? Known as gladiatrices, these fierce women fought criminals, animals, and each other in arenas, showing that gladiator combat wasn't just a male-dominated sport. Their rare presence in the arena added an extra layer of spectacle, further proving that the gladiatorial games were brutal, but equal opportunity entertainment. Now we've all been taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, right? Well, not quite. Nearly 500 years before Columbus, Viking explorer Leif Erikson of Greenland landed in what is now Newfoundland, Canada. Around the year 1000 AD, the Vikings set up temporary settlements, making them the first known Europeans to reach North America. This groundbreaking fact often gets overlooked in traditional history books. Moving on to engineering marvels, the Great Wall of China, stretching over 13,000 miles, is not one continuous wall. It's actually a collection of walls built over centuries by different dynasties. And no, you can't see it from space with the naked eye. Contrary to popular belief, the wall is too narrow and blends with its surroundings, making it impossible to spot from orbit. Speaking of spectacles, Venetians, or animal gladiator fights, were a popular form of entertainment in ancient Rome. Wild beasts such as lions, tigers, and elephants were brought from all corners of the Roman Empire to fight in the arenas. These animal combats often became the star attractions, captivating audiences with their sheer brutality and drama. During World War II, the Luftwaffe's top interrogator, Hans Scharf, had a unique approach. Instead of using torture, Scharf gained trust by treating prisoners kindly. He took them on nature walks, shared jokes, and even served them meals. His non-violent methods proved so effective that the U.S. military adopted similar techniques in their interrogation training. In ancient Asia, elephants weren't just majestic animals, they were also executioners. In certain Asian empires, execution by elephant was a popular method of capital punishment. These highly intelligent creatures were trained to crush bones or decapitate using blades attached to their tusks. This terrifying practice continued in some regions well into the 19th century. During preparations for D-Day in World War II, the UK government used an unexpected tool, postcards. The British government asked the public to send in postcards of Europe's coastline from Norway to Spain to help evaluate potential landing sites. These simple postcards played a crucial role in the selection of Normandy as the best location for the Allied invasion in 1944. And let's not forget Marcus Crassus, one of ancient Rome's wealthiest men. After a disastrous military campaign in Parthia, Crassus was killed, and the Parthians poured molten gold down his throat as a final insult. This was a grim mockery of his legendary greed. And according to some accounts, they even sent his gilded head and hands back as trophies to their king a harsh end for one of history's richest figures. World War II may have ended decades ago, but its remnants still haunt modern-day Germany. Every year, about 2,000 tons of unexploded bombs dropped during the war are discovered. Before any new construction begins, the area must be thoroughly inspected for buried ordnance. One dramatic discovery happened in 2011 when a drought revealed a 4,000-pound bomb on the bed of the River Rhine. The bomb was so dangerous that 45,000 people were evacuated from their homes in Koblenz. It's a stark reminder that history doesn't always stay buried. Think skirts are just for women? The ancient Greeks would have disagreed. In their culture, skirts were a symbol of masculinity. Greek men viewed trousers as effeminate and mocked anyone who wore them. Warriors and athletes often donned short tunics that showcased their legs, symbolizing strength and power. Fashion trends have certainly evolved since then. Ever tossed out one of those musical birthday cards? Here's something to blow your mind. The computer chip inside that card has more processing power than the entire Allied army had during World War II. Yes, the technology in a simple greeting card is more advanced than what Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin had at their disposal.
It's incredible how far technology has come, and now we casually discard things that would have been revolutionary back then. When we think of elephants in history, we often remember Hannibal, the Carthaginian general who famously crossed the Alps with an army that included war elephants. These massive creatures were a powerful tool in battle, causing chaos among enemy ranks. While only a few survived the harsh journey over the mountains, Hannibal's use of elephants left a lasting impression on history and military strategy. Medieval justice could be brutal, but did you know animals were sometimes held accountable too? In 1386, in Falaise, France, a pig was put on trial after attacking a child who later died from their injuries. The pig was arrested, imprisoned, and even assigned a lawyer. After a formal trial, the pig was found guilty of murder and executed by hanging. Yes, a pig faced the same justice as a human criminal in medieval times. Here's a time-traveling fact for you. Cleopatra lived closer to the moon landings than to the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Cleopatra reigned from 51 BC to 30 BC, around 2,500 years after the pyramids were built, and roughly 2,000 years before humans set foot on the moon in 1969. The vast timeline of ancient Egyptian history is simply staggering when viewed this way. We often hear the term shrapnel in war contexts, but did you know it's named after a real person? British Army officer Henry Shrapnel invented an anti-personnel shell that would burst mid-air scattering bullets over enemy troops. This invention, introduced in the early 1800s, revolutionized warfare, and his name became forever associated with deadly fragments from explosions, a true case of a name going down in history. The British are known for their love of tea, and this obsession even extended to warfare. During World War II, British tank crews would step out of their vehicles for tea breaks, which sometimes led to ambushes. After one such attack in 1944, the British military decided to equip tanks with tea-making facilities. Since 1945, all British tanks have been fitted with a boiling vessel, ensuring soldiers could enjoy their tea even in battle. Now that's dedication to a cuppa. During World War I, the French military came up with a clever trick to confuse German bombers. They built a fake Paris Complete with mock versions of landmarks like the Champs-Élysées and Gare du Nord, this replica city was designed to lure enemy pilots away from the real Paris. It even had a fake railway system with lights to mimic the movement of trains. Luckily, the war ended before this decoy city was fully tested, but it remains one of the more creative examples of wartime deception. Long before modern flamethrowers, the Byzantine Empire wielded a fearsome weapon known as Greek fire. This ancient, napalm-like substance could burn on water, making it a devastating tool in naval battles. Its exact composition remains a mystery, as the formula was lost with the fall of the Byzantine Empire. Greek fire was launched using ship-mounted flamethrowers, capable of destroying entire fleets within minutes. Water didn't extinguish the flames, it fueled them, making the fire burn even stronger. Truly, it was a weapon that left its mark in history. Let's delve into one of history's greatest unsolved mysteries, the Voynich Manuscript. Discovered in the early 20th century, this ancient text has puzzled scientists and cryptographers for over a century. Written in an unknown language and filled with strange, otherworldly illustrations, it has been carbon dated to between 1404 and 1438. Despite countless attempts to decipher it, no one has yet unlocked its meaning or origin. Is it a coded message, a lost language, or perhaps even a hoax? The Voynich manuscript remains an enigma to this day. In the midst of World War II's brutality, there were rare yet unforgettable moments of compassion and respect. After Japanese forces sank two British Royal Navy ships, the HMS Prince of Wales and the HMS Repulse, in December 1941, a remarkable gesture followed. The day after the attack, Japanese Flight Lieutenant Haruki Iki returned to the battle site, not to fight, but to drop two wreaths into the sea. One was for his fallen comrades, and the other was to honor the British sailors who bravely fought. Even in war, humanity finds moments of respect. The beaches of Normandy, famous for the D-Day landings of World War II, hold more than just historical significance. Scientists have discovered that 4% of the sand on these beaches is still made up of microscopic shrapnel from the landings. 
more than 5,000 tons of bombs were dropped in the lead-up to D-Day, and tiny remnants of this debris remain embedded in the sand. It is estimated that within the next 150 years, this shrapnel will rust away completely, leaving only memories and history books to tell the tale. Have you ever heard the phrase, fly off the handle? This saying originated in the 1800s, when poorly made axe heads would literally fly off their handles if not properly attached. Imagine swinging an axe to chop wood, only for the head to go soaring through the air. It's no wonder this dangerous event became a metaphor for losing control or one's temper, flying off the handle. Here's a fact that will leave you puzzled. In the 17th and 18th centuries, European aristocrats indulged in a strange and cruel pastime called fox tossing. The objective? To throw a live fox as high as possible. Couples used a sling to launch the fox into the air, and the higher it went, the better the score. Thankfully, this bizarre and inhumane sport has been relegated to history's dustbin. Turkeys are more than just a holiday feast. They were once considered sacred. The Mayan civilization believed turkeys were vessels of the gods, honoring them in religious ceremonies. Domesticated turkeys played significant roles in Mayan rituals and were thought to carry divine power. So, next time you see a turkey, remember it was once revered by one of history's greatest civilizations. Many know Captain Morgan as the face on a rum bottle, but did you know he was a real person? Sir Henry Morgan was a Welsh privateer who fought for England against the Spanish in the Caribbean during the 17th century. His successful raids earned him a knighthood and a wealthy life in Jamaica. Though he passed away in 1688, Captain Morgan's legacy and the rum live on. When you think of Genghis Khan, a fearsome conqueror might come to mind but did you know he was surprisingly tolerant of different religions? Genghis welcomed diverse faiths into his court, regularly consulting Buddhist monks, Christian missionaries, Muslim scholars, and Taoist monks. While he followed Tengrism, who's more interested in moral and philosophical teachings than enforcing any one religion. Here's something surprising about Thomas Edison. He didn't invent most of the things he patented. Of the 1,093 patents in his name, many were created by other inventors. For instance, Edison didn't invent the light bulb. That credit goes to British inventor Joseph Swan. Edison was a master at refining and commercializing existing ideas, rather than originating them himself. It's hard to imagine Albert Einstein as anything other than a brilliant physicist. But in 1952, he was offered the presidency of Israel. Though deeply moved, Einstein declined, stating that he lacked the experience and natural aptitude for politics. His humble refusal highlights his unwavering commitment to science over political power. Imagine a horse discussing Roman politics in a toga. Caligula, the infamous Roman emperor, appointed his favorite horse, Incitatus, as a senator. The horse lived in luxury with a marble stall, a jeweled collar, and even an ivory manger. Caligula allegedly planned to make the horse consul of Rome, but his assassination stopped these wild plans. Modern politics might seem strange, but at least we're not electing horses. We love cats today, but back in the 13th century, Pope Gregory IX declared black cats as agents of the devil and ordered their extermination. This may have led to a rise in the rat population, which in turn helped spread the Black Plague across Europe. Some historians suggest this feline purge may have inadvertently fueled one of the deadliest pandemics in history. Maybe think twice before avoiding that black cat crossing your path. Everyone knows the Leaning Tower of Pisa for its famous tilt, but did you know it was never straight? From the start, construction on soft ground caused the tower to lean. Attempts to fix the tilt only made things worse. Today, the tower stands as an iconic symbol of imperfection attracting millions of tourists who marvel at its enduring flaw. During the Great Depression, many American families couldn't afford new clothes, so they turned to flour and potato sacks for fabric. Food companies even began printing their sacks with colorful designs, allowing families to sew clothes that didn't look so shabby. These sack-made garments have since become a symbol of resilience and creativity during hard times. We've all heard of rebellious college students, but Lord Byron took rebellion to a whole new level. When he enrolled at Trinity College, Cambridge in the early 1800s, he discovered a strict no-dogs policy. 
Byron found a loophole and brought along a pet bear instead. Since the rules didn't mention bears, Byron was able to keep his furry companion and even take it on walks around campus. Did you know Iceland is home to the oldest continuously running parliament in the world? The Althing was established in 930 CE and has been meeting ever since. For over 1,000 years, this assembly has created laws, resolved disputes, and led the country. While much of the world was still forming, Iceland already had a sophisticated legal system. Though World War I ended over a century ago, its dangers remain. Farmers across France and Belgium regularly unearth unexploded bombs, grenades, and shells from the war in what is known as the Iron Harvest. These dangerous remnants have caused over 1,000 deaths since 1919, and specialized teams continue working to safely remove them from the fields. If you think this year has been long, nothing compares to 46 BC, the longest year in history. Known as the Year of Confusion, Julius Caesar added two extra months to the calendar to realign it with the seasons, making the year a staggering 445 days long. This reform also led to the creation of the Julian calendar, which laid the foundation for the one we use today. Here's a fact that will leave you scratching your head. Did you know the Sahara Desert was once a lush paradise teeming with life? Around 100 million years ago, it was home to predators, including a terrifying species of crocodile that could gallop. Discovered in 2009, these prehistoric crocs had long, powerful legs designed for sprinting on land. Imagine being chased by a running crocodile across the desert. No thanks. The Victorians had some peculiar traditions, one of the strangest being post-mortem photography. In the 1800s, it was common to photograph deceased relatives, posing them as if they were still alive. Families dressed their loved ones in their finest clothes for one last photo. While it seems eerie today, it was a way for families to preserve memories of their loved ones in an era when photographs were rare. Imagine surviving not one, but two atomic bombings. Tsutomu Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima when the first bomb was dropped on August 6, 1945. Miraculously, he survived severe burns and temporary blindness. The very next day, he returned to his hometown of Nagasaki, only to face another bomb on August 9th. Remarkably, he survived with minor injuries and later became a vocal advocate for nuclear disarmament, using his story to promote peace. Today's dentures are made from modern materials, but back in the 19th century, they were far more gruesome. After the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, dentists collected teeth from fallen soldiers to craft dentures for the wealthy. Known as Waterloo teeth, these dentures were prized for their quality, coming from young, healthy soldiers. If you needed dentures back then, you might have been chewing with a dead soldier's teeth. Tug of war isn't just a fun summer camp game, it was once an Olympic sport. From 1900 to 1920, this game was featured in the Summer Games, with nations competing to pull each other across a line. Britain dominated the competition, claiming the most medals, while the US, Sweden, and Belgium also made their mark. Who knew this childhood game had such a competitive edge? The fear of being buried alive was real in the 18th and 19th centuries. To combat this terrifying fate, some coffins were designed with bells attached to strings leading to the surface. If someone was mistakenly buried alive, they could ring the bell to alert cemetery watchmen. The phrase, saved by the bell, originates from this practice, though it also comes from boxing, not just burial. These prehistoric galloping crocodiles weren't just a nightmare for dinosaurs. They show us how dynamic Earth's landscapes once were. When the Sahara was a tropical oasis, these predators ruled the plains, blending traits of modern crocodiles and land mammals. It's a striking reminder of the drastic changes our planet has undergone. Imagine a Roman general celebrated with a grand parade, where soldiers sang crude and funny songs poking fun at their commander. During Julius Caesar's Gallic triumph, his soldiers reportedly sang, Romans, hide your wives, the bald adulterer is back. These cheeky chants provided a humorous way to lighten the mood after the chaos of battle. Life as an Egyptian pharaoh had its perks, but they could not escape pesky flies. To keep insects away, pharaohs had their slaves covered in honey, acting as living fly traps. 
the flies were attracted to the sticky mess, allowing the pharaohs to enjoy their reign without the annoyance of buzzing insects. This might make you cringe, but in ancient Rome, urine was used as a mouthwash. High in ammonia, urine was believed to whiten teeth and disinfect the mouth. Thankfully, modern toothpaste has come a long way, but Romans were willing to use whatever they had for a cleaner smile, even if it came from an unexpected source. If you had a fashionable mustache in the Victorian era, you needed a special cup to protect it while sipping tea. Enter the mustache cup, designed with a built-in guard to prevent whiskers from getting dunked into your drink. This quirky item shows just how seriously the Victorians took their grooming habits. Did you know lotteries have been around for thousands of years? The earliest known lottery took place during the Chinese Han Dynasty, between 205 and 187 BC. Citizens drew Kino slips in a game that likely funded major government projects, including the Great Wall of China. The tradition of lotteries continues today, helping to fund various initiatives worldwide. But lotteries were not just a Chinese tradition. Ancient Rome had its own version too. While Chinese lotteries funded impressive public works, Roman lotteries could take a darker turn. Emperor Augustus Caesar introduced them to finance the repair of the city, offering prizes like valuable objects. However, Emperor Elagabalus took things to the extreme. During his reign from 218 to 22 AD, he would catapult lottery tickets and even live snakes into crowds. The prizes could be as sinister as dead animals or even death sentences. Participating in Elagabalus' lottery was truly a dangerous gamble. Imagine living in a world where no one needs to work for a living. Sounds like a dream, right? For the ancient Spartans, it was a reality. Sparta was one of the wealthiest cities in ancient Greece, and its citizens didn't lift a finger to earn their fortunes. Spartan men were granted large plots of public farmland, along with Helot slaves to work the land. While the men trained as soldiers, the real twist lay with Spartan women, who owned the majority of the land due to unique inheritance laws. With many men dying young in battle, their wives inherited vast fortunes, making Spartan women some of the richest individuals in all of Greece. Now let's travel to the University of Oxford, one of the oldest universities in the world, which has been welcoming students since 1096. Here's a mind-boggling fact. Oxford is actually older than the Aztec Empire, which didn't begin until 1325, centuries after Oxford had already become a center of learning. It's incredible to think that this university predates such a powerful civilization. Fast forward to World War II, when the US Army became the largest in history, swelling to a staggering 12 million soldiers by 1945. Driven by wartime patriotism and conscription, the US outnumbered even the colossal German and Soviet armies each reaching around 11 million soldiers. Let's step back to 1666, when the Great Fire of London destroyed over 13,500 houses, leaving 80,000 people homeless. Amazingly, only six people are known to have perished in the blaze. The fire started in a bakery and spread quickly through the wooden buildings, yet the low death toll remains a mystery. Historians believe that many more might have died but went unrecorded. If you thought Dracula was just a myth, think again. The infamous Count from Bram Stoker's 1897 novel was inspired by a real figure, Vlad the Impaler, a 15th century ruler of Wallachia. Vlad earned his gruesome reputation by impaling enemies on stakes and displaying their twitching bodies as a warning. This chilling practice, combined with his mysterious death, inspired Stoker to create one of the most feared characters in literary history. Speaking of terrifying historical figures, let's talk about Elizabeth Bathory, also known as the Blood Countess. Born in 1560, she is considered the most prolific female serial killer in history, allegedly torturing and killing over 650 young women. Her twisted desire for eternal youth led her to commit unspeakable acts, including bathing in the blood of virgins. Though she was imprisoned, her noble status protected her from a public trial and she spent her final years in a windowless room. Here's a mind-blowing fact from the French Revolution. For 12 years, from 1793 to 1805, France revamped its calendar and timekeeping system. The French Republican calendar aimed to break away from religious ties and usher France into a future of decimalization. 
Days had 10 hours, each hour had 100 minutes, and each minute had 100 seconds. While this system may have seemed futuristic, the French people struggled to adapt, ultimately returning to the traditional Gregorian calendar by 1805. Now let's shift focus to the great conqueror, Genghis Khan. Known for his brutal military campaigns, he also revolutionized communication by establishing one of the first international postal systems called the Yam, a mounted courier service that connected his vast empire through post houses and way stations. This efficient system allowed messages to travel quickly, ensuring effective communication across thousands of miles. In a surprising twist during World War II in 1941, British and Soviet forces invaded neutral Iran. Yes, Iran was not part of the war, but had something both sides desperately wanted, oil. This invasion, known as Operation Countenance, aimed to secure Iran's vast oil reserves and protect a crucial supply route for the Allies. Here's a jaw-dropping fact about Genghis Khan that's still relevant today. A 2003 study revealed that one in 200 men alive today are direct descendants of him, approximately 19 million men. How is this possible? Genghis Khan fathered at least 11 children, and his descendants spread across the vast Mongol Empire. The genetic legacy of the Great Khan continues to thrive, marking one of the most significant bloodlines in history. After enduring years of brutal fighting during World War II, when the Soviet Union finally heard the news of the Nazis' surrender, they had a very Russian reaction. They threw a nationwide party. The celebrations were so intense that within just 22 hours, the entire country ran out of vodka. It was a brief but epic moment of joy and relief after one of the darkest periods in history. During the Great Depression, people found a strange way to survive, dance marathons. These human endurance contests were not just for fun. For many, they provided food, shelter, and even prize money during desperate times. Partners would take turns sleeping while the other kept them upright and dancing. Some marathons lasted for days, with the last couple standing declared the winner. It was a grueling yet necessary way to cope with the hardships of the Great Depression. Now let's travel back to ancient Rome. The Circus Maximus was the grandest sports arena the world has ever seen. With a capacity of up to 250,000 people, it could hold almost double the crowd of today's largest stadium, India's Narendra Modi Stadium. Home to thrilling chariot races, public executions, and Roman triumphs, the Circus Maximus was the center of entertainment in ancient Rome and remains one of the largest capacity arenas ever built, showcasing the grandeur of Roman architecture. Speed is everything when it comes to surgery, right? Well, maybe not always. Meet Robert Liston, known as the fastest knife in the West. In the 19th century, before anesthesia, speed was key to minimizing a patient's agony. Liston was so quick that he could amputate a leg in under 30 seconds. However, during one infamous operation, he accidentally sliced off his assistant's fingers. A spectator, feeling the blood splash onto him, collapsed from shock and died of a heart attack. To top it all off, both the patient and the assistant later succumbed to blood poisoning from the shared operation. That's right, Liston is the only surgeon in history with a 300% mortality rate from a single surgery. Talk about a dark chapter in medical history. Here's a bizarre family twist you probably didn't know. Adolf Hitler had a nephew, William Patrick Hitler, who fought against the Nazis during World War II. Born in Liverpool to Hitler's half-brother, William Patrick moved to Germany in his early life, but soon realized that Uncle Adolf wasn't the family member you'd want to be associated with. In an ultimate act of defiance, he fled to the United States, joined the Navy, and fought for the Allies as a hospital corpsman. He was even awarded a Purple Heart after being wounded in battle. Who would have thought a Hitler would end up on the right side of history? When you think of Charles Darwin, you probably picture him studying nature, not revolutionizing office furniture. But Darwin, ever the innovator, actually invented one of the first wheeled office chairs. While office chairs with wheels existed before, they weren't comfortable or efficient. Darwin needed to move quickly between desks, lab stations, and specimen tables, so he added wheels to his armchair, allowing him to zoom around his workspace and increasing his productivity while developing the theory of evolution a little faster. Speaking of innovation and bravery, 
Let's travel to the American Civil War, where the first Medals of Honor were awarded. In 1862, a group of Union soldiers led a daring raid behind enemy lines known as the Great Locomotive Chase. These brave volunteers stole a Confederate train and wreaked havoc on the South's infrastructure, sabotaging railway lines as they made their way toward Tennessee. Their courage earned them the first official Medals of Honor, marking them as true American heroes. Hollywood is synonymous with movie magic today, but it only became the film capital of the world because filmmakers were trying to escape the grasp of Thomas Edison. In the early 1900s, Edison held patents on nearly all the technology needed to make films, forcing filmmakers to pay hefty fees or face lawsuits. Consequently, they packed up and moved west to California. By relocating to Los Angeles, they found themselves far enough from Edison's reach where copyright enforcement was slower. That is how Hollywood became the heart of the film industry. It all started with an escape plan. And now for a hilarious historical tidbit. Shakespeare, the king of drama and tragedy, also gave us the first Yo Mama joke. Long before schoolyard banter, Shakespeare slipped a savage insult into his play, Titus Andronicus. In the play, Chiron accuses another character by saying, thou hast undone our mother. To which Aaron responds, villain, I have done thy mother. Shakespeare might have been ahead of his time, but he clearly wasn't above a little comedic flair. Next, our first story takes us to the Isles of Scilly, off the coast of England, where one of history's longest wars occurred, lasting a staggering 335 years. But here's the kicker. There were no battles, and not a single person was harmed. Back in 1651, during the English Civil War, the Dutch sided with the parliamentarians while the Royalists sought refuge in the Isles of Scilly. The Royalists, desperate for supplies, raided a few Dutch ships, prompting the Dutch to declare war. However, they soon realized the Royalists were broke and decided to call it quits, only they forgot to officially make peace. Fast forward to 1986, when a historian stumbled upon this forgotten war and invited the Dutch ambassador to sign a peace treaty, finally bringing this peculiar conflict to a peaceful end. That's right, a war with no bloodshed that lasted 335 years. Let's jump forward to World War II. Did you know that hamburgers almost disappeared from American menus? Because the term hamburger sounded too German, Americans rebranded them as Liberty Steaks. This patriotic twist mirrored similar changes during World War I when sauerkraut was renamed Liberty Cabbage. It's amusing to think how something as iconic as a burger could have had a different name. Just imagine asking for a Liberty Steak at your local fast food joint today. Shifting from food to firearms, let's discuss one of the most famous types of ammunition in history, the 7.62 mm bullet. Developed by the Russian Empire in 1891, this round was originally created for the Mosin Nagant rifle. Its legacy didn't end there, as it became the standard ammo for the AK-47, one of the most iconic rifles in modern history. Even after 133 years, this bullet remains in use worldwide. Whether you're into history or not, you've likely heard about this legendary piece of military technology. Let's rewind back to 1710, when a group of Native American leaders made an extraordinary journey to Britain. Four Mohawk kings from the Iroquois Confederacy and Algonquian leaders were invited to meet Queen Anne at her royal court. They traveled in royal carriages, visited landmarks like the Tower of London and St. Paul's Cathedral, and were treated like honored diplomats. This moment of cross-cultural diplomacy offers a glimpse of early international relations long before the famous Lewis and Clark expedition. Ever heard someone say ax instead of ask? That's not just modern slang, it's a Lynn, gistic throwback. In medieval England, the word ask was pronounced ax. It's even recorded that way in the first English translation of the Bible, Acts, and it shall be given. So, if you've ever wondered why some people still say it that way, blame the medieval English. Speaking of medieval England, did you know that pineapples were once the ultimate status symbol? In the 18th century, owning a pineapple was a significant deal. These exotic fruits were so expensive that the wealthy would parade them around like the latest fashion statement. And if you couldn't afford one, no problem. You could rent a pineapple for a day and strut your stuff. 
Imagine Instagram influencers doing that today, posing with rented pineapples to show off their luxury lifestyle. Now, let's travel back even further, 100,000 years ago. That's when the first known artworks were created by our ancestors, Homo sapiens, during the Upper Paleolithic era. Found in modern-day France, these ancient masterpieces offer a glimpse into the minds of early humans and their desire to express creativity. It's amazing to think that art, something we treasure deeply today, has been a part of our humanity for so long. Let's head to ancient Egypt, where people did not sleep on soft, fluffy pillows. Instead, they used slabs of stone to rest their heads. The head was considered sacred, regarded as the seat of spiritual life, so Egyptians believed it needed proper care. These stone headrests were even engraved with protective symbols to guard against evil spirits while they slept. Not exactly the kind of pillow we would want for a good night's sleep, but hey, it worked for them. Our next story begins with Paul Tibbets, the pilot of the Enola Gay, the plane that dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima in 1945, a moment that changed the course of history forever. While his role in the mission marked him as a significant figure in World War II, Tibbets made an unusual request near the end of his life. No funeral, no headstone, and no physical marker to remember him by. He feared that his grave would become a site for protests against nuclear weapons. Instead, he was cremated and his ashes were scattered over the English Channel, forever tying his memory to the skies he once flew. A pilot whose actions influenced the world, yet he chose to leave no trace behind. Next up, brace yourself. Did you know that Adolf Hitler helped design one of the most beloved cars in the world? Yes, the Volkswagen Beetle. This little car was developed as part of Hitler's vision for a people's car, meant to be affordable and reliable for the average German. He worked closely with Ferdinand Porsche to bring this vision to life in the late 1930s. While the Beetle has since become a symbol of fun, freedom, and even peace, its origins are deeply rooted in Nazi Germany's desire to motorize its citizens. Strange how something so iconic could be tied to such a dark chapter of history, right? When you think of Winston Churchill, you probably imagine him with a cigar in hand, delivering one of his iconic speeches. But did you know that he was granted a special doctor's note during Prohibition-era America? In 1931, Churchill suffered a car accident while in the U.S., leaving him with chest pain and anxiety. His doctor issued a note allowing him to drink an indefinite amount of alcohol while in the States. This was at a time when alcohol was banned across America. Churchill's fondness for whiskey was legendary, and with this special permission, he managed to enjoy his favorite drinks even during one of America's most restrictive eras. Here's a myth that might surprise you. In ancient Greece, people believed that redheads would become vampires after death. Why? Redheads had pale skin and were sensitive to sunlight, just like the vampires of legend. Combine e that with the rich vampire folklore in Greek mythology, and you get one seriously spooky superstition. So, if you have red hair, ancient Greeks might have thought you were destined for a life in the shadows. In the afterlife, that is. Let's talk about America's National School Lunch Program, created in 1946. You might wonder why a nutrition program was launched right after a massive war. The answer may surprise you. The U.S. government recognized that the health of its citizens, especially schoolchildren, was crucial for future military drafts. By ensuring kids were well-nourished, they aimed to build a stronger, healthier draft pool. It's a striking reminder of how major world events can influence even the most mundane aspects of daily life, like what our kids eat for lunch. Next, we all know Abraham Lincoln as one of America's greatest presidents, but did you know he was also a wrestling champion? Before he stepped into the White House, Lincoln built a reputation in the wrestling ring, standing tall at six feet, four inches. He only lost one match out of nearly 300. That record would make even today's athletes jealous. So the next time you think of Honest Abe, remember he was not just a political leader, but also a fierce competitor in the wrestling world. Now let us discuss the guillotine, an infamous symbol of the French Revolution. Surprisingly, it was designed with the idea of equality in mind. Before the guillotine, execution methods varied significantly, with nobility receiving more lenient punishments. 
The guillotine was introduced to provide a swift and humane death for all, regardless of status. It is a chilling reminder that even in death, fairness and equality were pivotal to the revolutionary spirit. Wow, who knew history could be so full of unexpected twists and turns? We hope you enjoyed this wild ride through facts you will not find in your textbooks. If you are Hun, Gry for more mind-bending history and science stories, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to Science Telly.